Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. It is time for a big ol' book haul. I got a ton of books um, last month in January. So many arcs that I can't wait to get to, as well as a bunch of finished copies, some that I bought for myself, some that publishers and authors have sent to me, and I also want to do a little unhauling of books. Um, this is like my last box of books that I need to donate, so I figured I'd just do that at the end of this video. So I'm just gonna start with all the arcs that I got because I'm excited to show you guys. Um, first is A Sweet Mess by JC Lee. I am so freaking excited about this one because it is an own voices Asian American romance and it's a foodie romance and anything related to food I am all for it. This one the heroine is a bakery owner. She ends up falling for a jaded food critic who um, she has a one-night stand with and I think he gives her a bad review under like wrong circumstances so now he's trying to help her fix everything that's gone wrong it sounds so adorable the cover looks adorable like this little bun cake going on love it again I'm really excited I just read this author's debut book temporary wife temptation and I loved it so I have high hopes for this one and then Berkeley sent over a bunch of amazing romances that I've been highly anticipating like look at these first is something to talk about by Meryl Wilsner this one is is Berkeley's very first FF romance and it's set in Hollywood so we get like a Hollywood star falling for her assistant and then they get into a scandal when some picture of them being close but platonically close goes out into the public and everyone thinks they're a couple now so what starts off as something that is not real turns out to be very real I really need to read more FF romances and I'm really glad that Berkeley is finally publishing one next I got Real Men Knit by Quana Jackson. This romance is in New York City in Harlem and the hero's mom has just passed away and she owns this knitting store that the hero wants to keep open. His brothers don't but then the heroine steps in. She's been working at the store as a part-time employee and she wants to help the hero keep the store open. It sounds so adorable. I am here for a hero who knits. This cover is the cutest and also yay for more diverse romances. Next is Not That Kind of Guy by Andy J. Christopher. This is um, her second book. She released the first book, um, Not The Girl You Marry, last year. I still have not read that one. I am hoping to by the time a Polycon comes, but we'll see. But this one sounds really promising. I like this blurb a lot more than the first one. It is an office romance, kind of sort of forbidden romance, and an accidental marriage. The hero is the heroine's intern, so she is essentially his boss. Um, but his internship program is about to end really soon, so it's not that weird. Probably no messy legal stuff if they do get together after the internship program, right? But it's love at first sight for him. He he wants her but he's waiting until the program ends to ask her out and coincidentally she needs a date to go to some wedding and then from there they somehow end up in Vegas and married. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all works out. And then I got The Marriage Game by Sarah Desai. This one is a South Asian romance. The main characters are competing for this office space um, above the heroine's family's restaurant. They're forced to share this office space as they battle out who gets it in the end. And it sounds so much fun. The cover is the cutest, very San Francisco-y. And then last from Berkeley is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This one I had no idea even existed. It was not on my radar until it showed up in my house and I'm so glad they sent me one because it sounds perfect. I'm crossing my fingers though that it's not like woman's fiction than an actual romance uh, but I guess we'll see. We have two writers who have become neighbors for the summer. Um, the hero is a literary fiction writer and the heroine is a romance author. They are quite the opposites um, and they're both stuck in a writing rut so they kind of make a deal that they'll switch um, to each other's genres. The hero, instead of writing literary fiction, will be writing a romance and vice versa for the heroine. And they'll also be doing some like real life trips to inspire the other person. It sounds 
so adorable. I love this premise and I can't wait to read it. This next one I have such high hopes for. It is To Have and to Hooks by Martha Waters. This is a debut romance. A couple of the ones that I've mentioned are also debuts as well. So exciting. This one is a historical romance and a rom-com. I love when the two are combined because honestly the only like historical rom-com-y authors that I know are Tessa Dare and Mia Vinci. So I'm hoping this one will be good as well. We've got an already married couple um, but like four years ago they got in this humongous fight and haven't talked or seen each other since then. They reunite when the wife thinks that her husband is almost dying so obviously she rushes to go see him but he is very much alive and well and what ensues is them trying to one-up the other and trying to prank the other person. It sounds hilarious and adorable and I love a good second chance romance. This next one um, I have not heard very good things about. It is The Kissing Game by Marie Hart. Um, reviews have, for this one have been really bad <laughs> and I know Jessica Peace Love Books didn't even finish this one. So as adorable as the cover is um, I probably will be skipping this one. Reviews have mentioned some problematic stuff uh, which you can read yourself on the Goodreads page which sucks but I mean when you're gonna write about diverse characters you kind of have to get it right. And then Forever sent me two amazing arcs. Um, the first one is The Happy Ever After Playlist by Abby Jimenez. This one is her second book, um, the follow-up to The Friend Zone. This one is about Sloane, the best friend from The Friend Zone, who had a very tragic ending in that book. Because of that ending, I was kind of expecting her book to be a little bit depressing, but it honestly sounds really cute and adorable, and I've heard reviews say that it it, it is. Sloan, who is trying to move on from her grief, she ends up finding this lost dog and adopts it. But then after a couple weeks, the dog's actual owner reaches out and wants him back. It sounds like they fall in love with each other um, through texts that they send because the hero is some um, musician on tour. Honestly, I just love that dogs are such a big thing in Abby Jimenez's books. Let me go grab my dog real quick. If I were to write a book, I would absolutely put a dog in it. I have really high hopes for this one. Abby Jimenez was a really strong writer with her debut. And then I got All I Ask by Corinne Michaels. This one is a second chance romance. My fave. Although it kind of sounds more like a, a friends to lover second chance romance like they were friends. There was some unrequited love and now they're reunited. They are both also single parents. Corinne Michaels does really well when it comes to single parent romances. I've read and loved a couple of her indie romances and I'm really excited that she's publishing with a traditional publisher. And then I got Deal with the Devil by Kit Roka. This one is the first book in their Mercenary Librarians post-apocalyptic um, fantasy romancy series. And yes, there are actually mercenary librarians in the series. The heroine is one, there's actually like a group of them, a group of mercenary librarians, and the hero is a part of this squad of super soldiers. It sounds epic and awesome. I've been hyped for this one for years since Kit Roka first announced that they were writing this series and publishing with Tor. I think there's supposed to be three books in the series and I'm kind of hoping each one has its own separate romance. I've been wanting to read Kit Roka. I read them under their different pseudonym um, for some new adult romance. I've been wanting to read some of their dystopian stuff. I have a lot of their um, erotic dystopians in audio but I just haven't gotten to them yet. And then I got Almost Just Friends by Jill Shalvis. This one is woman's fiction. The heroine has raised her siblings all her life and now she just wants to be free from them. So lots of family stuff. There does sound like there's romance as well. And then last of the arcs I got Kingdom of Back by Marie Lou. The heroine is the older sister of Wolfgang Mozart and it's very much centered around music. All she wants to do is compose music like her brother but she's not allowed to being a girl. I'm really excited about this one. I love Marie Lou. Her legend series was probably one of the first that I read when dystopians were becoming a big thing um, and I also love that 
she used to write futuristic stuff and now she's diving into historical fiction. So those are all the arcs. So let's just dive into everything else that I got. First is this finished copy of The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. Still have not gotten to this one yet. I really want to soon. It is Enemies to Lovers. The hero was the guy who broke up his brother's um, engagement to the heroine. So they don't like each other, but they're forced to work together for this new um, client. I've been hearing really great things about this one. So if you've read this, let me know what you thought. And then I got The Lying Season by K.A. Lindy. This one is out next week or in a couple weeks this month at least. I've been really excited about this one because it is a second chance romance and it is an office romance as well. Kay Lindy is really good at angst so I'm hoping there's a lot of it in this one. He's the new legal counsel at her office so they're forced to work together. Next I got Ribbon Night by Debbie Perry. It is so nice. I love the covers for the series. Um, it is book two in her Motorcycle Club series. I actually just finished book one. I liked it but I am really into this um, second couple because it's a marriage of convenience, a modern day marriage of convenience, and the hero Isaiah sounds so unbelievably tortured. I started the first couple pages and I have not finished the rest just because I've been in a little like non-reading mood. I'm currently binging on The Good Place on Netflix and that's basically what I've been doing instead of reading. But yeah, this one is my current read so hopefully I'll get to finishing it soon. I've heard a lot of great things about it. I think most people love this one the second book more than the first one, um, so hopefully I will too. And then I got Headliners by Lucy Parker. This is book five in the London Celebrity series, although each one I think can be read as a standalone. I have not read this series yet, even though it's been on my TBR for years. I've heard nothing but good things about these, um, this author and this series. It is an enemies to lovers romance between rival TV presenters, but now they're working together to save this failing morning show. It sounds fabulous. The cover is so sweet and soft. Lucy Parker is one of those authors that I have put on my list for this year, even though I say that every year. Next, I got Spark by Aletha Romig. This is book one in the Web of Desire series. It is a dark contemporary romance series. I think she mostly writes dark romances. The blurb for this one is really, really vague, but based off of some reviews that I read, um, the main characters have known each other since they were in foster care together, which makes me very, very intrigued. I love when main characters, you know, already know each other prior to the start of a story. So it is a dark romance, probably mafia related, I'm not sure, but there probably will be some questionable stuff happening in this one. Next, I got Outmatched by Samantha Young and and Kristen Callahan. I adored this one. I thought it was super cute. Um, I did not expect these two authors to co-write a book together, but they worked really, really well. It is an opposites attract romance, um, almost kind of enemies to lovers as well. There's a ton of great chemistry and banter, and the main characters have to pretend to be dating so that um, the hero can get some money and the heroine can get on the good graces of her boss. I just really enjoy this one and I hope that the authors will be writing again. I would not mind if we get a book for the hero's brother Dean. And then I got Whatever It Takes by Kristen Becker Ritchie. I have been waiting for this book for years. This is Willow and Garrison's book, who we first met in the early Addicted books years ago. They had a developing romance as secondary characters, but we never actually get like got their full romance. Until now, both books in this duet are out. I read this one. I haven't gotten to the second one yet, but this one was really sweet fairly low on drama. It's just like a lot of, it's just dealing with them being in a long distance relationship as well as discovering how they first fell in love with each other. So it's like past and present point of views. I just love being back in this world, back with these characters, especially with the core six. It's dorky, it's nerdy, it's really adorable. And I need to get to the second book soon. Next I got The Guy on the Left by Kate Stewart. This was a giveaway win. I actually won The Guy on the Right, but I guess they like messed up and sent me The Guy on the Left. 
which I don't mind. I mean, I haven't read either. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this and the first book. The blurb is kind of vague. Um, it's like a teacher-student romance, but not anymore. And then the hero is a single dad. I don't know what's going on, but people love it. So I'm looking forward to it. I got a couple of mass market paperbacks. Um, this one I bought for myself at my library in like the dollar section. It was a pretty poor romance selection, like the used books. Um, but I found this anytime I see Cressley Cole. I'm grabbing it. This one is two novellas in one book, Cresley Cole and Gina Showalter. Cresley's is part of the Immortals After Dark series. I've already read it and I'm basically slowly collecting my paperback um, collection. And then I got this gorgeous finished copy of A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mella Vane. I read this recently and loved it. It was such a good um, epic high fantasy romance. Lots of great world building, although does kind of get a little confusing in the beginning, but I loved this fantasy romance. The romance was fantastic. Slow burn, angsty, lots of steam, um, good stuff. It is enemies to lovers because the hero thinks that the heroine and her family were the ones who killed his parents. They end up forming an alliance um, with the marriage of convenience, but the hero still hates her. So that's where the slow burn and angst comes in. And then I got Vendetta Road by Christine Feehan. This one is... I'm not sure the number, but it's part of her Torpedo Inc. series. It's an MC series. I don't think there's any paranormal stuff going on, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, this one is Love at First Sight for the Hero, which I always love. And then I got Storm Cursed by Patricia Briggs. I actually own the hardcover of this one, but I couldn't help myself and ask for this paperback too. It is book 11 in the Mercy Thompson series. I'm a book behind. Um, I still have to read the last one before this one, but I love this series. It's urban fantasy, werewolves, fae, vampires. The heroine herself is a coyote shifter, so it's epic and awesome and I love it. And then I got Wild Country by Anne Bishop. I've been wanting to read Anne Bishop for the longest time. I know she is like up there as a top fantasy, urban fantasy author. I probably won't be reading this one. Um, it is a couple books into a series and I think they're all kind of connected, so can't just jump in with this one. I've heard such good things about her other series. Yet another series that I need to read this year. And then of course, A Temporary Wife Temptation by JC Lee. I love this one. I read this for the Lunar New Year readathon and it was fantastic. Um, marriage of Convenience, Alpha Hero, Awesome Heroine, about the lives of rich Korean Americans. I thought it was an amazing debut and I'm really looking forward to the next two books in the series. And then I got Breathe by Kristen Ashley. This one a friend sent to me because she was unhauling some books and I was like wait I want that one. I've been doing that a lot with friends recently. I just sent a book to Jessica. I have a couple of the other books in the series and I really enjoy it. It's the Colorado Mountain series. This book, Breathe, and the next book, Jagged, are the only two that I haven't read yet. Um, but this one is a librarian falling for the town cop. It's huge. Chris Ashley only knows how to write big books. Um, so I honestly prefer to listen to them in audio, at least these days I do, but I am really happy to have this one. Some more books from forever. I got Justified by Jay Crownover. I, I'm i gonna be seeing her at a Polycon this year. I don't think I've ever seen her yet or like met her yet um, at any of the polycons that she's been to that I've been to. So hopefully I'll get the chance this year. This one is a cowboy romance if you could not tell. The hero is the town sheriff and the heroine is the lawyer who lost him custody to his son. So um, he does not have the best of feelings for her but they're forced to work together to chase down this criminal. Um, I think the second book is out or coming out really soon. And then I got A Christmas Romance, A Christmas Bride um, by Hope Ramsey. This one's got a grumpy single father hero. Um, 
Um, so it already sounds promising. I also bought some books for myself on Amazon. Um, first is Act Your Age by Eve Dangerfield. This is one of my favorite books, one of my favorite erotic romances. It is Daddy Kink with an age gap and office romance. It's super angsty and crazy hot. I love it. I've been waiting for this book to be available in paperback. It was only available in ebook um, for like years until last year and then I finally grabbed it. There's some really derby going on. The hero is the grumpiest guy ever. It's just so so good. And then of course I had to get myself Credence by Penelope Douglas. This is one of my favorites from last month and already on my favorites list of the year. It's a reverse harem, um, lots of sexy times. You don't really know who the hero is supposed to be until like further into the book. It's a choice between three guys that the heroine is stuck with um, up in the mountains. Her step uncle who um, she has no relation with and his two sons. It's great, it's dark, it's kinky. I loved it. And then I've got a couple more books before we get to the unhauling. Um, I got Olive Again by Elizabeth Strout. This one is an Oprah's book club pick from last year. I saw it a lot on Instagram when it came out, so I've heard a lot of hype for it. And then the paperback of Daisy Jones and then the paperback of Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Had to request it from the publisher just because I've heard nothing but amazing things for it, um, especially for the audio too. It's all about this rock band and it's set in the 60s. Um, sounds like a lot of fun and a very different kind of like writing style. Next I got Ignite on Contact by JC Burton. This one is part of her firefighter series Brotherhood by Fire. This firefighter falls for an ER nurse. I also got the finished copy of Echoes Between Us by Katie McGarry. This is her young adult contemporary romance. I haven't read it just yet but I'm sure it's like just as emotional as any of her other books. I got this Christmas romance, um, The Reindeer Falls Collection, which is three novellas um, in one. I actually listened to this one um, in audio. I thought it was the perfect Christmas read listen. It's set in this small town that goes all out during the Christmas time and about three sisters and their romances. It's hilarious and adorable and if you've been wanting to read some Christmas romances post Christmas this is a great one to go with. I also got This Is Forever by Natasha Madison. This one is a hockey romance um, with a single mother heroine who falls for her son's new summer coach hockey coach. This is a new to me author. I have not read her or the series yet um, but it sounds really great. I mean I love sports romances. And then I got Until the Last Star Fades by Jacqueline Middleton. This is a new adult contemporary romance set in New York. Um, these two lost souls find each other in New York City and fall in love with each other. And then last is the latest three books in the Bailey series by Piper Rain. We've got Falling for My Brother's Best Friend, obviously the brother's best friend trope. Demise of a self-centered playboy. We've got a playboy who is reforming himself and apparently some Alaskan reality TV show that they're both on. Um, so they're forced to share a tent together. And then last is Confessions of a Naughty Nanny, a nanny romance with a music producer single parent. So those are all the books that I got last month in January. Um, quite a lot. I unhauled a bunch of books to make room for them. So now let's get to the unhauling time. It'll probably make this video um, quite long but we'll do it. Let me just turn on the lights though just because it's getting dark. So this is the last box of books that I need to donate. This is my book haul. It's a pretty big box. I already donated um three boxes worth of finished copies and two boxes of ARCs. This is the last of the finished copies. So we'll just go through them. A lot of these books are books that I just know I'll never read. So I want to give them to people who will read them. Or I have like extra copies that I got from publishers for some reason. Um, so yeah, let's just start with 
Jill Shalvis, Rainy Day Friends. This one is woman's fiction, not my genre. For some reason, I have two copies of Life on the Leash by Victoria Shod. I mean, it is dog related, but I just like, don't think I'll ever read it. Taylor for Trouble. This one is actually signed to me. Um, I'm not sure I should give this one away then. I don't know how people feel with a book that's already like marked up. I mean, it does sound good, but I just don't think I'll ever read this. I never really got into this author. I have Troubles and Treats by Tara Sivek. Civic. This one is actually a second copy. I already own one of them. Um, I have the series in paperback already, so I don't really need this one. I have a couple Christmas stuff. Um, the Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan. I mean, I do like Sarah Morgan, but I like her romances, and I'm not into her women's fiction stuff. And this one is centered around the sisters. The cover is really pretty though. And then another Christmas one, Dear Santa by Nancy Nagel. Also getting rid of Tarasumi, the headmaster. Um, I'm just not reading erotic romances anymore, BDSM romances anymore, so I don't really need this one. I have another Jill Shalvis women's fiction book. I think this one is related to the other one that I hauled um, earlier. Hidden Ink by Carrie Ann Ryan. This one I actually got from a Polycon last year or two years ago. Um, they gave it away as like a free thing with like the Friday night events. But I've never read this author. I've never read this series. So I'm not really interested in this one. I was kind of hoping for a Tessa Bailey one to be honest, but I didn't get it. I'm getting rid of Title by Emily Snow. This one is one of her new adult romances that she published with a traditional publisher. I got this a long time ago and just haven't read it and I don't think I ever will. I got this strange fantasy book. It was sent from a publisher, but clearly the publisher does not know the genre that I read. Um, I did not request this one, so I don't want it anymore. And then another Christmas one, um, Season of Wonder by Rayanne Thane. Never read this author. I know a couple friends do like her. Torched by Donna Grant. This one is Paranormal Romance, but I've never read the series and it's like a really long series that I just don't have the time to get invested in. The Huntress by Kate Quinn. This is historical fiction, I believe. Never read it, never read this author. Sandra Brown, Out Fox. Also have not read this one or this author. And it's a thriller too. By the book by Julia Sonborn. This one I actually did read when it came out. I read the ARC, donated the ARC last weekend, giving away this finished copy too. I mean, I liked it, but I don't necessarily love it that much that I have to keep a copy of it. The Coincidence of Kelly and Caden by Jessica Sorensen. I actually liked the series when it like first got popular. Even though I love New Adult, I don't think I'll ever read the series or continue with the series. Another erotic romance that I know I won't read, Shelley Bell, His to Claim. These three I'm still debating over, Kristen Proby's um, Romancing Manhattan series, All the Way, which is book one, and then All It Takes, which is one of the more recent ones, and then another series, Listen to Me. I actually read these two, but I didn't love them, so I might just end up giving them away too. Not that into the series. I have A.R. Tours, um, the last two books in her thriller series. Don't remember what it's called. I read the first book, The Girl in 6E. It was interesting and different, but I didn't love it. And the series is thriller too, so I'm not that interested in it. But I do love Alessandra Tor, at least her contemporaries. I'm getting rid of Anna Todd's books. I'm not sure if anyone has read these. Um, I haven't. Getting rid of Meredith Wilde's books just because I read the first book. Um, it was okay. Wasn't all that impressed by it, so probably won't ever read the rest of the series. And then I got an extra copy of The Matchmakers List by Sonia Lolly, but I heard this book wasn't even that great. Um, so not gonna feel bad getting rid of this one. Bedmates by Nicole Chase. This one is a political romance, new adult romance. This one, the heroine is the president's daughter and she falls for the bright 
Vice President's Son. I really wanted to read this when it first came out, um, so I was happy I got a copy, but then I never got to reading it. Um, and it's been years since it came out, so I might as well donate it. Breathless by Celeste Bradley and Susan Donovan. Never read any of these authors before. Um, this one is like a blend of historical and contemporary romance. Like the two timelines connect somehow. I was never really interested in this one, so donating it. And then these last two, Emily Giffen, Catherine Stedman. Um, never read these authors. Don't think I'll read those ones either. And that's about it for my unhaul. Gonna be donating all of these. I already donated so many boxes last weekend to Goodwill. Um, so yeah, that was my book haul and unhaul. Um, hope you enjoyed. I'll leave links to all the books that I mentioned in the description below, minus the unhauls, just because that would be a little bit too long. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Bye!